Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Task Human Talks. I'm your host and fellow wellness provider, Jamie Carroll, and today I have got Sarah Spitler with me, and Sarah is one of our spiritual wellness coaches. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Of course. Thank you for having me. I love your glasses. <laughs> oh, thank you. I like yours. Too. Thanks. Now, where are you calling in from? I'm in Chicago, Illinois. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Awesome. So let's dive right in. Um, what does it mean to help someone with their spiritual wellness? Sure. So spiritual wellness is really our journey to get to know ourselves and to recognize the divine within ourselves and within the world around us. So I think to tap into spiritual wellness, some of the most important elements are self-care. I would say meditation or prayer, depending on someone's personal practice. And then being aware of a sense of what is greater than ourselves. Mm. So whether that be someone believing in God, like in my own tradition, or just some sort of recognition that things are much broader than just what we have within ourselves. So spiritual wellness is like really like cultivating a better relationship with ourselves, with God or whomever it is that you, you know, resonate with through things like, like in order to develop that relationship, you're using tools and techniques like prayer, ritual, meditation, you know, things like that. Like, how can we tap into what is greater than us? Like, how can we cultivate that energy, you know, or like kind of establish that for ourselves? Sure. I think the two biggest elements are gratitude and communication, right? Mm -hmm. Like any relationship, a relationship with the divine or a relationship with ourselves requires open communication. And so when I introduce the idea of prayer, what I'm looking for from my clients or the people that I'm working with is just an openness to talk and listen to put out into the world into the universe to communicate with god what are my desires what am i struggling with uh where do i find joy and what am i grateful for those are kind Mm. of the main elements of that communication we can't expect to have a healthy relationship when we're not communicating like any other relationship that we have um and then gratitude is so essential to spiritual wellness it's a way that we can be reminded of the things that are important to us, mm. the things that we are doing well in our lives, which I think a lot of the times we're just so hard on ourselves. It seems like a societal issue, right? That we right. really get down on ourselves for all of these things that are outside of our control. So to be grateful for the things that we do have, that we are good at, that we're working on, right? Small victories is also a huge part, I think. I think so. Well, practices. I love that you just said yeah. that, small victories, because I think that that's the piece that a lot of times we miss, right? We're looking for these big achievements or only like tracking the big things, but really like the small things are so, if not more important almost. Right. It's about habit building. Right. And I think that's a huge part of what I work on my clients with is like, okay, you're not going to wake up tomorrow and be able to meditate for 30 minutes. That's a really long time of being quiet and silent. And and that's a long time to spend with yourself when, when you're not used to doing that. So instead, like try two minutes and see how it goes and build. you wouldn't start weightlifting with your max rep, right? Right. (laughs) Build up to that point. And it's very similar for prayer and, and habit forming, really. You have to start small. Yeah. And it's good to celebrate those too, right? Because then we're going to keep going. Like you mentioned habits and building on habits, because if we're just like waiting to celebrate till we get to the, hit that 30 minute meditation mark, that's going to be really frustrating kind of right. working your way up to it. So it's like, okay, maybe you just meditated for a minute. Yeah. That's great. That's you awesome. know, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And meditation puts so much powerful, positive energy into the world. Like call it prayer, call it meditation, call it self-reflection. Any of those things when you're not actively putting out like negative vibrations, I feel silly saying it. Sometimes the negative vibrations into the universe, like you're adding to the positive flow. You're adding to what this world should and could be. And so I think any of those like little positive reminders, just a minute, like 
totally worth it. it. And I had heard one time, I'm wondering what you think about this, that prayer is that communication piece. You're talking to God. And then the meditation is like the listening piece. So many people get confused with meditation or they say like, I'm not good at meditating. Do you ever hear that one? Like, I'm just not good at it. Yes. Or this is silly, but in Parks and Rec, Ron Swanson has to meditate for 20 minutes or something. He's like, I, I won. I thought of nothing that whole time. And it's like, no, that's actually the goal. Like, the goal is that you're not giving power to negative thoughts. You're not giving energy to your own stress. You're truly just taking a moment to pause and be present. That's what meditation yeah. is. And exactly in Christianity, we call it contemplative prayer. And it's actually oh. the most challenging form of prayer because okay. it, it requires us to let go and to right. not be the one who's in control of that moment. We're letting God be in control and we are taking the time to listen. And it takes a long time to develop a sense of like what is coming from God and what is, you know, coming from my, my own self and my own intuition, but it's still possible to get there right. just by starting with a minute or two a day. Or I even tell people like maybe a minute a day is not something you can give up. But maybe it's five minutes on a Friday that you can give up. Right. And then starting from there, the more that you get used to it, the more you feel like you can't go without it. And that's kind yes. of the goal. Yes, absolutely. And I love what you said too, like letting go of control, because I feel like when people are like, I'm not good at meditating, well, what they really mean is I'm not good at letting go of control. <laughs> I want to, exactly. you know, which is just an illusion anyways, because yeah. we really don't have any control. <laughs> Exactly. Right. Or that idea of like, oh my gosh, 20 minutes a day, where am I going to find 20 minutes in my schedule to do yeah. this? Right. Yeah. And I even think like it could be the 20 minutes that you're preparing for bed. Like what else are you doing during that 20 minutes? That's productive right. for me. I'm like scrolling through my phone. That's I know not super productive before right. I go to bed. So yeah. why not replace that with a practice that is productive. Absolutely. I love that. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk about on this talk today is virtue. So I know I saw that that's one of the topics that you coach on in the task human app is virtue. What does this mean and how do you relate it to spirituality? Sure. So virtue is good practice and good habits that help us to lead good lives that will eventually in the Christian faith, lead us to heaven, lead us to God, or in general, just help us to be good moral people. So I think of virtue, things like courage, faith, wisdom, these types of things that we can cultivate and practice that lead us to becoming better people, better in our relationships, better in what we can do for the world, and more true to who we are meant to be. So is virtue like a way of living a moral lifestyle? Like what's the difference and what are the similarities between being virtuous and leading a life of morality? Is there a difference? What are the sure. similarities? So virtues are tools that we use to okay, live tools. a moral or ethical life. And again, in the Christian faith, we have a whole concept of morality called virtue ethics, okay. where we're living our lives based on those ethics and avoiding the opposite of virtue, which would be vice things that lead us further away from who we're meant to be. Practicing virtue is really the best way to develop into a moral person. Mm, when we okay. talk about practicing virtue, that can seem hard, right? Like how do right. I practice being courageous? Right. Well, it's whenever a situation arises, the best way to address this thought, this concept, this situation that I'm in, we have to take a moment to stop and reflect and mm. consider what is the most true response to who I am and who I want to be. Because we're not always, you know, the person that we want to be right in this moment. Mm -hmm. But if I'm trying to become that person, then I need to do things that I would do as that person. And that's how I'm going to get there. Yeah, It is a practice. And it's also not getting super down on ourselves when we don't respond in the best way. So virtue are tools that we are utilizing. What are some of these tools? What are some things that you're working with people on to help them determine this for themselves and even like determining what is moral for them? You know, like what is the yeah. process behind that? Sure. So I think one that's totally underrated, but very necessary is temperance, which okay. is the virtue of moderation. 
Okay. So it's just understanding that like sometimes we go overboard with things, yeah. sometimes we don't do enough of something. And the key is balance in the middle. Okay. And that's where we find temperance. Temperance actually has like two vices, so to speak, that you would like consider with it. And one of those would be like excess or gluttony. And then the other one would be scarcity, like not allowing ourselves to do something to the point where it's austere in nature and and damaging in another way, right? Right, right. If we're working to be our healthiest selves, spiritually, physically, physically, we would make sure we're getting enough carbs, enough protein, Mm -hmm. enough fat, working out in the right way. We know right. starving ourselves is not going to work. And we know that eating too much of something that's no. going to lead us in the wrong direction is also not going right, to work. Right, right. So the key is finding what's in the middle and that's practicing temperance. Let's use meditation as an example. Okay. Well, the obvious not enough would be like, oh, I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll get to it tomorrow. I'll get to it tomorrow. And never actually start. And the too much is diving in and saying, I'm going to tomorrow start doing an hour of meditation every single day okay. with no training. I'm just going to go for it. Right. And then that's still not going to be fruitful because we don't know how to do it. <laughs> that's where that practice of like, I'm going to start with five minutes this Friday. Okay. And then next Friday, I'm going to do six minutes building to that place of good balance. And then maybe the most meditation I personally am comfortable doing is 20 minutes. I'm never going to get to that hour. That doesn't mean I'm not doing it well. I'm the same. Or like maybe the hour, if I do a longer meditation, it happens like once in a blue moon where I'm like, oh, no, I'm really feeling this. And it's not a judgment about that. And I think that we so often feel like if I'm not doing it perfectly the first time, I have to restart every time. And I am much more a fan of a harm reduction method of like, I didn't meditate every day this week, but I meditated three days this week. And that was more than last week. So that's pretty good for me this week. That's a good point. We can get so um, discouraged. And I see this a lot with healthy eating. The past two weeks, I've just been so busy or I was on vacation or something. And then we kind of forget about it because the things come up in life. Things happen that, that kind of jar us and throw us off our balance or our schedule. Like what are some mindset tips to kind of just be like, okay, yeah. So the last two weeks were a little crazy, but I'm just going to get back to it. Like, how can we just continue despite the chaos yeah. of life. I think first and foremost is having grace for ourselves Yeah, and recognizing we're not perfect. We're on the road to perfection. Like right. we're never going to achieve it in this life. That's a, yeah. again, a Christian understanding. <laughs> we're never going to achieve perfection in this life, right. but everything that we do can lead us there or it can lead us away. So recognizing the things that are leading us away and the things that are leading us there And then being grateful for both experiences and the awareness and knowledge of both. Mm. I think that, again, gratitude is such a key Mm. practice here. Reflection after the fact is another thing that can help us reset ourselves. So that week that we weren't so great, taking a minute at the end of that week and recognizing I felt this way because I wasn't able to do my daily practice. Right. Of prayer or meditation. And then also recognizing like, but I was grateful for the moment that I was able to connect with a person who I hadn't connected with in a while, or I spent time in nature and that had a similar Mm -hmm. impact on me. So understanding that like our lives are not the same day to day Mm -hmm. and having grace for the moments where we feel off track and gratitude for the moments where we can find something to get us back on track. I love that. So although maybe you completely weren't eating as healthy as you said you were going to the past two weeks, but like you're grateful that you spent time with your family, that you took time off work, that can kind of help get you back on track. Now it's like, okay. And now it's like back to the healthy eating or the meditation. And Um, there's such a soul body mind connection that I think we often neglect. And these are the little practices that help us to strengthen that. Is there like a right, wrong, good, bad? Is there a place for that in virtue? Absolutely. When we like follow a virtue too strictly, Mm -hmm. we're actually not doing good for ourselves. We're kind of doing harm because we're not leaving room for us to be human. We're expecting ourselves to be perfect. So we can get really hard on ourselves thinking like, I wasn't perfectly modest in whatever I was doing. I bragged about myself too much or whatever. We're not going to do a lot of good um, because when we reflect on that, we're going to think, you know, we're going to think poorly of ourselves. There is good and bad. There are things that 
especially in virtue ethics and Christian morality, we believe that there are objective goods and bads. Okay. However, we have to take into account circumstances and intentions for any of those actions, right? Like okay. my intention was to do this. I didn't actually act on it, but I know that because of my intention, I started and I can get, get where I need to go. I literally wasn't able to practice my moderation because I was on vacation with my family and we couldn't do it in the same way that I usually do it. It would have been a sacrifice of time with my family that I wasn't giving, willing to give up at that point in time. It's recognizing like, okay, this isn't the way I wanted it to go. Not getting too hard on yourself, okay, but also moving towards where you want to be. Yeah, I love that. Just kind of but refocusing it to the future forward. Right. We can't ignore when we've done wrong. We do right. have to sit with it, reflect on it. Yeah. But the second we let it weigh us down and prevent us from doing good again, that's when it becomes a real issue. Yeah. So it's like a two part reflect, acknowledge, and then looking forward. So what do I do now? How can I get back on track and move forward? Exactly. And be judge act is kind of what we call it. In okay. Person. And how much of virtue is dependent upon like culture, where we grow up, you know, um, what part of the world we're in and also like not just culture, but like media, our mentors, people around us, how does that influence? Yeah. So I think culture is a huge part of the way we view virtue and the way we practice virtue, right? Our practices in the United States could be totally different than right. someone who's practicing the same kind of ethics in Thailand, for example, right? right. And we're just going to have a different understanding of what it looks like to practice that virtue. It doesn't change the virtue itself, okay, um, but it does change the norms surrounding that virtue. Okay, And I think to be a really compassionate and open-minded person, we want to learn from the way others practice their virtue as opposed yeah. to judge them for being like the wrong way to practice virtue. I get very frustrated when I have people um, who I work with get so hung up on the way that they do it that they have a hard time recognizing that someone else could still be doing it right, just not the way that they do it. Right. That's interesting too, because we work, you know, with people from all around the world. So how, how much, like, are you helping people tap into their like heritage, their culture to kind of build upon their virtues in that sense, but then also being understanding if there's like other ways of doing it, you know, that they want to bring in, how are you helping the different cultures tap into that for themselves? I find myself having to really check myself when I'm encountering someone who's from a culture that I'm not familiar with. Right. And then it becomes like, I have to be a lot more inquisitive about the way that they practice things right? and kind of learn from our conversation about like, okay, what's the best way for me to advise you in this? Right. Because I'm from a totally different place where the things that I would you know, my gut reaction to share or to, you know, the advice I would hope to give, maybe it's just not going to work where you are, right? Like I was speaking with someone about burnout prevention and a big idea that I was trying to encourage him to take away was self-care. And he had this dedication to his work and his family that I think was clouding his idea of what self-care could look like Uh and how it could actually be taking time off of work to spend time with your family in his thought process where he is from he found it very challenging like a very challenging concept because he's taking care of his family by doing his work you know but he was feeling disconnected from them and so it felt to me like maybe this is an opportunity for reconnection but it just took us a little bit of back and forth to get to that place of like okay I understand where you're coming from And I think you understand where I'm coming from. So let's figure out together, like what the best case scenario is here. I feel like I'm learning so much about, I can imagine value different things. Yeah. Yeah, And actually I was going to ask you too, if you've noticed anything when it comes to virtues, is there anything like cross-culturally that kind of is very similar virtue wise that we all practice? And then what are like some of the biggest differences that you see? I think it's not like directly a virtue, but just family practice and relationship Mm. are the things that come up over and over again, regardless of who I'm talking to. People want improved relationships with their family, with their friends, with their loved ones. 
and they want to be the best person they can be for those people that they love. Like that seems yeah. to be just a universal norm as human beings, right? We're, we're bred for connection. We were created for connection. Yeah, and that's absolutely. so clear, right? Oh my God. That's been and so then, highlighted, I, especially the past couple of years. Exactly. And that's what everyone brings up. Like, well, I haven't gotten to see these people or my family's in a different country and I haven't been able to, you know, connect with them in the way I want to. I think that's very universal. And then I think the biggest difference is then just like the role within relationships Uh, as it, you know, as it relates to gender or class or hierarchy, those things have been challenging for me personally to navigate as a coach. However, again, I'm learning a lot from the people I'm working with. Mm -hmm. And I think I went in with this perception of, will I be respected? Like, will I, will someone actually want to listen to me when I come from a different place in a different culture? And I've found that people are very willing to listen and share. Um, I love that. Yeah. It gives me a lot of hope that, that the people who want help are seeking it. And I think that that's like step one. How do we know if we're living a a virtuous life? How can we be aware of that? To borrow a phrase from a very good friend of mine, when we feel fully alive, that's Mm -hmm. how we know we're living a virtuous life. So what does that look like? What does it mean to feel fully alive? We have moments of connection in our lives every single day where if we were to, at the end of the day, take stock of everything that happened and reflect on them, we could say like, that's a moment where I felt like myself. Or they say, you know, when you're with the right person in a, ro- in a romantic relationship, that person makes you feel like you can be your whole self around them. Mm. That doesn't have to be exclusively for romantic relationships. That can be in your job. That can be in your family. That can be with your social group. That can be with your animals that you love. Yeah. Like any of those moments, <gasps> that's how you know that you're doing it right we have a clear sense of the people in our lives who are good for us and who are not good for us. Whether we want to admit it and acknowledge (laughs) it is a different story, but we know, you know? And I think that that's the soul connection of like, I know the people in my life who make me feel most like myself and most alive. Do you ever get people that are like, but I don't know who I am? You know, like if if we're talking about like, oh, I feel most like myself, like how, have you ever had someone that's like, I'm just confused. I don't know. Like, how do you help them reconnect with themselves? Absolutely. I get people like that a lot, especially people who are sharing that about, you know, their professional lives. If they're concerned about, this doesn't seem like the right thing for me, but I actually don't know what is. And I am a huge fan of trial and error. (laughs) Ah, Okay. Maybe it's not leaving your job before you have another job lined up. But maybe it's taking a class and figuring Mm. out, you know, oh, is this something I like or something I don't like? Reading more about something, um, picking up a new hobby. Any of those, again, can be small, small practices that allow us to become more aware of ourselves Mm. and more open to exploring other things. It can be really scary Mm -hmm. to try something new, anything, right? Like, let's say you're not someone who cooks and then you're talking to me and I'm like well how often do you make dinner for yourself and connect with your food and they're like never (laughs) so then (laughs) my suggestion would be like just try once a week to make something for yourself feel connected to it if you truly hate it you don't have to keep doing it I'm not there to check in on you every day (laughs) like I'm leaving this in your hands and it's up to you to find that to find what speaks to you like discovering new hobbies and, and things that you may enjoy and kind of like using those things to rebuild the connection with yourself to, to bring you that yeah. joy. I love that. Another exercise that I like to, to utilize is um, asking someone how they would describe themselves. If you were to introduce yourself to someone brand new who's never met you before, you know, you say your name, how would you describe yourself? Is it in relation to other people? Is it the characteristics you have? Is it the things you like? Because each of those is going to tell us something about the way that you view yourself. So if Uh. I'm speaking with someone and I ask them that question, they're like, oh, well, I'm a mother. Yes, you are a mother. However, who are you? Like you're a mother to other people, but what about who you are to yourself? That's a deep self-reflective practice that takes a lot of time. And that's how we get to know ourselves. 
Yeah. Cause if you think about it, you know, if like that mother, you know, when her children go off to college, that's why it can be so hard in those moments. Right. Because we identify exactly. as, you know, our job or our status or whatever. And so when that is no longer there, it's like, we're in that struggle of going back to like having to reconnect. So asking yourself, you know, yeah, like, how do you view yourself? What is your connection to you and getting them to think about it in that way? That's really powerful. Yeah, I hope so. I hope it's something that people can like take away and apply to the rest of their lives, right? Because you might mother in a different way if you consider yeah. yourself an athlete first, right? right? That might impact the way that you're mothering or I consider myself a spiritual person. That might affect the way that you're mothering and you didn't even realize it and right. make you feel more yourself. Oh, that's such a great question. I might start using this as well, but really yeah. so many people identify first with like their jobs. They're like, oh, I'm a manager. I'm this, you know, that is a very yeah. fascinating question. I love that. You had touched on yeah. intention real briefly. How important is intention to when leading a virtuous lifestyle? I would say it's one of the three most important elements to leading a virtuous life. Like the first yeah. would be the actions that we take Mm -hmm. and the way that they may be perceived by ourself or others. The okay. second would be the intention behind our action. And the third would be what virtue are we actually practicing when we take this action? Intention is something that's entirely in our control. Of those three things, it's almost the only one that's entirely in our own control. Right. So when we go to do something or interact with someone, it's almost as if we should set a goal for ourselves mm. of what that interaction is. And that's going to lead us to the way we intend to do something or what motivates us to do that. And when we live life that's goal oriented, we're more likely to end up where we want to be. That's what I was going to ask is how would you define intention? And so it sounds like it's like kind of figuring out what you're really wanting from the action. What is the goal? What is the outcome you're hoping to get? And then you yeah. really know, like even more so what actions to be taking to kind of hit that intention. Exactly. You have to begin with the end in mind. And okay. I'm, a, I'm a teacher by trade. So that's a huge part of being a teacher and lesson yeah. planning and curriculum planning is where do we want to end up? What do I want my students to achieve in this unit yeah. or this test or this activity? And if I don't have a clear intention for that, they're going to know immediately and it's pointless. Like there's right. no point to doing that work. Yeah, absolutely. Intention is so important. You know, so many of us are just living our lives, just doing whatever, you know, without thinking about it. Like, and some, we don't even like remember doing things, you know? And so the more intention we can put into things that will help ensure that we are living a virtuous life. I love that. Yeah. So I love yoga and I used to think it was so silly when my yoga instructors would say like, I want you to set an intention for this practice. I was like, what does that, what does that mean? How does that relate to me? Right. But like, usually my intention, I, I would know it going in and then I just like, didn't want to name it for some reason. Right. But it's like, usually my intention when I do this is to relax, to stretch. To, right. to feel in my body in this moment, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same with like, if you're going to pray or meditate, set that intention ahead of time. This prayer is specifically because I'm thinking of this person who's really hurting and I want God to know that I'm thinking about them and I want yeah. that person to know that I'm thinking about them. And so that's why I'm going to pray today. Or my life has been so chaotic. My brain has not had a moment to be quiet. And so that's why I'm going to meditate today. I notice sometimes that I have a lot of the same intentions with different things. It's like presence, just being present. And then I'm really mm -hmm. like able to enjoy no matter what I'm doing. Like what's my intention when I go drop my car off at the car shop? I'm just going to be present. So I'm really like there, you know, or if I'm like taking a yoga class, what's my intention? It's got to be present in this class, you know? <laughs> right? right. And then I feel like that really helps me just really enjoy my life more. Cause I'm really in each experience that I'm having every day. So even if it's the same intention, That's exactly it. you know, it doesn't have to be a brand yeah. new intention for any, every little different thing that you're doing. It can be a similar one. There's this beautiful prayer from St. Ignatius where it literally just says, the goal of my life is to live forever with Christ. Mm. And that is my intention for most of what I do is, yeah. is this thing going to help me live forever with Christ? Or is it going to put me a few steps back? 
And the more that I think about that intention, the more I'm able to embody the virtues it takes to get there. I always have people set intentions in a session, you know, in different groups that I lead. And it's like, it can, it can be a the similar intention for when you go to brush your teeth. We right. don't have to always be, okay, what's my intention? You know, it doesn't have to be hard work. It's just living life according to how you want to and being intentional with it right. and <laughs> doing it on. That's like exactly. living a life on purpose. Like that's the purpose that we're mm. all seeking. You know, what's my purpose? What's my purpose? Well, what's your intention? <laughs> Maybe that's the better question. Right. You know? exactly. <laughs> and I think again, like People are like, oh, well, it's enough for me to like be a good person, but you need to have like demonstrable evidence of how you're being a good person, right? It's not enough to just say like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm doing my best day to day. It's like, what actions are you taking to help you be a good person? And then if your intention is to be a good person, you actually have to follow it up with your practices. Oh, this has been so great. Thank you so much for this conversation. Um, Is there anything else you want to share with anyone that's listening to this? Anything about what you're coaching on the Task Human app? Well, the first thing I want to say is I'm just grateful for anyone who signs on to our app because that means that they're trying and they're doing the first step of like recognizing I can't do this by myself. And so recognize that we're a team of people who are here to help you do that. And Mm -hmm. we want to help you do that we are here for you. We are here to support you. We can be a a drop in in your life or a regular, whatever you want. Oh, and any last tips or anything you want to give to anyone? I feel like I say this to all of my clients, but gratitude journals are so helpful to being present and to being in touch with our spirituality. Five things each day that you're grateful for, and it's going to change your outlook. So great too, especially if you're needing to get back on track with something. I love that you said that. That is just like a, that's a huge game changer, I think. Well, thank you so much again, Sarah. And to anyone out there who's listening, if you're ready to kind of, you know, you're ready to tap into your spiritual wellness, reconnect with yourself, get clear on your virtues, how you want to live your life, your intentions, your purpose, make sure you reach out to Sarah. You can find her on the Task Human app. And that's it for this session today. And I'll see you guys on the next one. All right. Bye, Sarah. Thank you. Bye.